This video starts by explaining how to save your character creator in ZBrush files so you can always easily open and resync your working files to pick up where you left off at any stage of the process. Then we discuss different possibilities for detailing your character in ZBrush. We don't deep dive into it since that would go beyond the scope of the series, but I'll have some resources for you. Finally, I do a quick morph variant of the finished character to make something unique-ish for this demo series. Let's say I've, I'm done working, but I want to pick this up where I left off later. Uh, pretty easy to do. So go in here. I'm going to say File, Save Project As. I was doing some Prince Rupert work earlier. I'm just going to throw this right on my desktop for ease of finding. I'm going to call this Goblin Demo 001. And when I hit Save, it's going to save it as a CC project right on my desktop. I have a perfectly compatible file over here in ZBrush. However, if I want my ZBrush sculpt, you know, now that I've done the proportional changes to match my character creator relaxed A pose, all I have to do is again, make sure everything's selected, hit go Z. We're going to send this back over to uh, ZBrush here. We'll choose relink current pose, hit go Z. There we go. And again, we didn't lose any information. We still have our subdivisions here. We still have our reference model in here. So again, with our character creator file saved, and then back in ZBrush, we have an identical ZBrush file that's compatible with our character creator file. I'm going to go up here to File, Save As. And again, right on our desktop here, I'll even keep the same uh, file naming convention. So we'll say Goblin Demo underscore 001. And when I save this file, it's going to save it as a ZPR or a Z project. And that's it. That's all you need to know. Now, in ZBrush, I'm going to talk about a a little bit more. Uh, we, when we save the Z project, it's going to save everything in your scene, including any stuff you have loaded over here. So for example, we have our reference model still sitting in here in our tool palette. Go ahead and select him. If we've already appended his body to our uh, subtool stack, you see that number went from nine to 10. We don't need these two sitting in our scene anymore. So I'm going to go down here and say, delete all. That'll just kind of clean out any garbage we have in our scene that we don't need in there. So we'll choose our character again, and then just go back in here to say, file, save. Now, I don't want to confuse any new users to ZBrush, but there is another uh, for you ZBrush users who like to say tool save as. There's only one caveat you need. Uh, if we were to do that right now, say tool save as, it would rename the first subtool in our stack to whatever your file name is. We do not want to do that. We want to keep this named CC base upper teeth. So in order to save a tool, go in here and say insert. Just grab any primitive. I'm just going to grab a poly mesh star. I'm going to hit the bent up arrow to put it as my top subtool. Uh, it's just a little star hanging out in my scene. If you want to, you can just move that up into somewhere in the body just to hide it. And then we can turn off. I just keep the visibility for that off because we're in here working on our character, obviously. And now when I go in here to tool, save as on my desktop, I'll just name it test and hit save. Now, when we hit the tool save as, it renamed that top node as test, but that's okay because it kept this name the same. Just keep in mind that if you do this method, go Z visible and just leave that off. But again, if you're new to ZBrush, I don't want to confuse you about Z tools versus Z projects. Just, let's just get rid of that top node here. Just go in here to file, save as, and if you need to clean up anything in your, uh, you know, you're getting busy over here in your subtool palette, just select it and hit delete all for anything you don't need saved along with your project. So now that we've got these saved, let's do a test. Let's go ahead and shut down ZBrush and we'll go ahead and shut down character creator and then we'll load them back up. So just like uh, in the first seconds of this, we'll go back to our Reillusion hub, hit open for character creator. And in character creator, let's go ahead and say file open project. Remember, it's right on our desktop here. Here's our goblin demo project. Go ahead and open that up. Back in ZBrush, go to file open. Open up your goblin demo Z project. There we go. Right back where we started. And when I'm just doing this and I'm playing it safe and it's been a while since I've played around with these uh, files, I know we just shut them down, but let's say it's been a while. I still like to go in here to Preferences, Go Z, clear my cache files, and then from ZBrush, I have everything visible that I want to send over. So we're going to say Go Z Visible. You're going to see Character Creator is already set to update. We'll choose Current Pose, hit Update. And there we go. We, have, we are relinked and we can continue sending things back and forth. 
Now, before we head out, I'm just gonna open a file that's already done. So same process, I'm gonna say file open project. Here you can see Goblin 1, 2, and 3. This is where I stopped working on the body and started texturing. So I'm gonna go ahead and load up Goblin 03. I'm gonna go ahead and discard this. We're gonna say no. I'm gonna say replace all. And then back in ZBrush, I'm gonna say file open. I'm gonna say no. And then back in here, I've got a Goblin 03. I'm gonna load that file up. So again, I've got a body file. I've got some reference. I'm gonna go ahead and turn all that off. So I just see my body that I've been working on and character creator. Here's that body. And again, I haven't opened these files for a long time. So back in ZBrush, I'm going to say preferences, go Z, clear my cache files. And again, on this base body here, we have geometry. Again, this is just three subdivisions in, but I've got uh, a pretty, pretty decent anatomical sculpt going on. And just to pick up where I left off between these two files, again, go in here to go Z visible. And again, back in Character Creator, it automatically picks up that it's an update. We're going to keep with the current pose, hit update. And now, even though I haven't opened these files in months, I'm right back where I started with parity between these two files, and I'm ready to keep going back and forth. Now, one thing we do probably need to change, uh, again, we have all the character stuff selected over here. I'm going to choose that top node. We're going to go back to our material here. Uh, remember, we chose our tongue down to our nails materials. Let's scroll down. And we're going to take the strength, we'll put it back up to 100%, and then down under, here, under Diffuse Color, we'll choose that white color here, and we'll hit OK. So one thing I'm going to touch on very quickly is uh, Skin Gen. Again, right now in ZBrush, we didn't quite get into skin detail. This is about as far as I would take it for just like general volumes, but not quite to poor, poor detail or tertiary detail. If you want, at this point in the process, you can go in here to Character Creator. And right next to the Morph tab where we've been playing around with the body shapes, right next to here is an Appearance tab. You can activate this editor, and this is what's called Skin Gen. And again, this isn't going to be a Skin Gen tutorial. We'll do that at some other point in the future. But there's a ton of stuff you can do in here for poor detail, uh, imperfections, blemishes, makeup, tattoos scars, paint. There's a ton of stuff you can do in here. And it's basically like Photoshop. You basically have a bunch of layers in here. It's non-destructive. So you can start layering up texture details for your head, body, arm, legs, and nails, etc. You can do it all in here using skin gen content. Again, here's some, you know, makeup and blemishes and skin details. You can go through here and apply it to your character and build up details that way. And again, like I said, you've got skin, makeup, outfits, these three tabs up here. Again, this isn't a skin gen tutorial. I just wanted to let you know that was available to you. So I'll go ahead and deactivate the editor here. And before we get into the substance painter component of our demonstration here, I'm going to show you how far I did take the skin. So I'm going to go back into ZBrush here. So this was, you know, kind of the volume blockouts. And if you want to take skin gen to the poor detail level, you can. What I ended up doing, I'm going to go in here to file open. Here you can see I've got a skin clean version and a skin beat up version. I'll go ahead and load up the beat up version. And this is going to include scan data wrap details. I'm going to hit F to frame my object here, as well as uh, just general wear and tear scars and all sorts of bite marks and, you know, old scars and stuff on his body. Now, I'm not going to cover the wrap process. It kind of goes outside of the scope of this walkthrough, but I'll have some links in the description from the 1024 Scan Store YouTube channel that you can wrap scan data to your ZBrush sculpt. You can get, you know, very quickly this level of skin detail on the hands and poor detail on the face. So if I go up here to the face you know, different pores on the nose and on the lips. And of course, there's other brushes that you can use. Uh, if I hit the comma key on my keyboard, I have some in my Lightbox tab. So if I scroll over here, like Pablo Munoz Gomez has some skin ZBrush, uh, ZBrush brushes that you can grab. So you can go through here and you can use these uh, if you want. Uh, also, even just your standard brush here, if we switch the stroke over to a spray stroke and then choose this Alpha 23, we can go through here and we can just kind of spray on pore detail. Obviously, you'll want to lower that intensity down a bit and you can kind of go through here and you can create your own pore detail that way.
Now, I'm going to interject here really quickly. I don't want to bloat this series and make it really long to covering a bunch of sculpting techniques, but I will throw you a link in the description where we talk about uh, how I basically went through and use different brush techniques and basic sculpting and using cloth simulation for wrinkles and skin to detail out this particular character. So I did take it to the poor detail level. And if I go over here and turn on colorize, I also had the scan data color. If I switch over from my green metallic over to skin shader four, I transferred this scan data poly or texture over as a poly paint onto my character. And I'm gonna actually bake this out in painter as a starting point. So create your high res final character, however you'd like with all the detail you wanna send back over to character creator. But before I do that, you might notice I have a slight discrepancy and I was gonna apologize for this, but I'm actually kind of glad it happened. So I have a mouth open file here in ZBrush and then back in character creator, I have a mouth that isn't open. So if you ever run into this situation, all I would suggest, and I'm gonna bring this up when I'm in doing the painter setup, is I happen to know for a fact that when I went to go open his mouth, I know the value for it. So if I need to re-link or reset up my connection between ZBrush and a character creator file and they're out of sync, I do know that I can go in here, for example, I've got my character base plus selected. I can go in here to the motion tab, go in here to edit facial. There's a lot of really cool, fun face stuff we can do in here. I'm gonna go over here to the modify tab and I know that I have the jaw open set to 65. So I'm gonna open his jaw, that amount, and then I'm gonna head back over into ZBrush. I'm going to have all these uh, visible uh, you know what? I can just do all since I deleted out my extraneous files, but you know, we can turn everything else back on. I'm going to say go Z all back over to character creator. That's going to update the current pose. There we go. We're good to go. I'm going to hop back into edit facial. If I go in here, I'm going to say jaw open to zero and I'm going to have everything selected. Go back in here to go Z. We'll go Z this back over uh, again. We're you know, I'm not creating, I'm relinking uh, eyelashes and tear ducts, current pose, go Z back over to ZBrush. That will effectively shut his mouth. And then I'm going to want to save both of these files as a new place to start with. So remember file, uh, save as I have a goblin demo O2 skin Z project I'll save. And then back in character creator, same deal file, save project as, and again, I've got a skin project here. So this is with both of them ready to go for our painter steps. And actually, before I do that, we're kind of, I'm, I'm kind of bored of looking at this goblin. I'm going to do a slight goblin variant. And again, just to kind of send home how easy it is to update these files back and forth. So we've got our two files that are synced up. Maybe some of the mouth shape here. We'll thicken his neck way out. Let's go in here to the morphs eye. I'm gonna do an eye scale and I'll do a width. So I'm gonna morph this shape around here. There we go. So we got kind of a, a goofy older brother look maybe. And I'm gonna send all of this back over to ZBrush. So again, base plus all of these back to ZBrush. Again, we are relinking current pose. I'm gonna hold down shift and turn off everything except for the base body here. Let's go up maybe to subdivision level two and I'm gonna temporarily turn off his body and we'll switch over to a matte cap or a green metallic. Let's give him a little bit of a different shape to his ears. Make sure X symmetry is turned on by tapping X on our keyboard. Control tap to blur that mask, control tap to invert that mask, hit W, alt tap in the ear, turn on L sim with dynamic off. Go ahead and scale these down. Hold down control, switch to mask lasso. We'll mask out the bottom part of the ear. Again, control tap to blur that out a little bit. Hold down alt to move the gizmo. And then we'll kind of rotate these around just a bit. There we go. We got kind of a, a sadder <laughs> version of our goblin here. Again, same part of the family. And I'm keeping the body the same because I am gonna make making accessories that need to fit his body. But, uh, you know, just kind of changing him up just a little bit, give him a little bit of a different personality. 
Now I can have something different to look at. So again, we're going to now transfer this high res detail and poly paint to our CC character using the painter process. Of course, first, uh, the change we made in ZBrush I need to send back over. So again, go Z all. Let's turn everything else back on. Update current pose. There we go. And we're ready to head into Substance Painter. This next video will go over the Substance Painter bridge functionality. Basically, export your low res character from Character Creator, high res from ZBrush, bake everything in Painter, texture it up, pass it back into Character Creator. A very easy pipeline to go back and forth between Character Creator and Substance Painter.